بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد continuing reading from الأصل الثاني من هذه الأصول الثلاثة العظيمة شيخ الإسلام محمد ابن عبد الوهاب رحمه الله تعالى reading from the second fundamental from these great principles of the deen that Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab he has mentioned in his book ثلاثة أصول ودلتها الأصل الثاني معرفة دين الإسلام بالأدلة the second fundamental and foundation and great principle that it's an obligation for every servant and every slave and every individual, male and female, to know them, to be aware of them, to believe in them, to, to comply to them. What they necessitate is to know the deen of Islam with evidence and, and with proof. We have seen what the author he has mentioned about this in his definition of Islam, the great and beneficial definition he has mentioned, وهو الاستسلام لله بالتوحيد والانقياد له بالطاعة والبراءة من الشرك وآهله and he we have read and he has mentioned رحمه الله that this great deen the deen of Islam له مراتب له ثلاث مراتب that it has three levels and stages الاسلام والإيمان والإحسان and we have seen some of the affairs related to this in our previous class and also we have left off whenever the author he mentioned arkan, and every one of these pillar, every one of these levels stages of the deen it itself it has pillars and uh, the pillars of al-islam al islami khamsatun and the pillars of al-islam they are they are five but uh, before we proceed <coughs> there is one last issue to mention and to discuss, to learn together, that is related to the statement of the author Bil Adilla. Because he mentioned this here in this portion of the text, and likewise he mentioned it as well in the beginning, and uh, to clarify the methodology and the correct way, the way of the people of the Sunnah and the Jama'ah, the way of the Sunnah wal Jama'ah, is that they study and learn the affairs of the Deen. But they learned them with evidences and proofs. We have seen as he began with al Masail al Arba, at the beginning of this work, Thalath al Usul, Wadilla Tuha. He mentioned the Alam Rahim Khala and Nuhu Yajibu Alayna Ta'alumu Arba al Masail. That it's obligated. He said, No, may Allah have mercy on you, that it's obligatory upon us to learn for affairs. And then he mentioned that Ula al Ilmu and his knowledge. This is the issue here. And this, the first issue is the knowledge, is to know, to have information and knowledge, correct knowledge. And this is the knowledge of Allah and the knowledge of His Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the knowledge of the deen of Islam with evidences. And the knowledge of Allah 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 with this is the first obligation. It's obligation and then to comply to that and to work by way of that and to apply that in one's life and then to invite and to call to it and to teach and then to be steadfast upon that until death. This is the way of the successful and all of this has proceeded. But the issue here now on the second uh, foundation he mentioned again. Al-Asl al-Thani ma'rifatu deen al-Islami bil adilla. Again to verify and to emphasize the issue uh, of the obligation of learning the religion and understanding the deen of Allah based upon evidences and proofs from the book and from the sunnah. So in the beginning he mentioned that it's an obligation. It's an obligation. These are the, from the four affairs. The first one is to know and to have knowledge of Allah with proof and to have knowledge of, uh, of the Prophet ﷺ with proof and evidence. And likewise the religion of Islam with proof and evidence. And we know that something that is an obligation, it has to be performed. The, the whatever Allah has made incumbent and obligatory upon his servants, then the one who performs it in compliance to his command and believing in him subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he has a reward with Allah Then he has a reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
as for the one who leaves it, he leaves it off. And he does not perform that obligation, then he has fallen into sin and transgression. Then he has disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So then the issue here is learning the deen huh, with evidence. Learning the deen with evidence. Ma'rifutu deen al-Islami bil adillah. Naam, so then we have two issues that we want to discuss here. With regards to learning and knowing and studying the deen of al-Islam and believing, as a, believing being a Muslim, believing, yani being a Muslim, believing in Allah and in the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and believing in this deen and, with evidence, with proof. So then we have the issue, the first one, and it's a mas'ala. So we present the question first. And it is, مَحُكْمُ التَّقْلِيدِ فِي الْأَقَائِدِ مَحُكْمُ التَّقْلِيدِ فِي الْأَقَائِدِ And yani Islam, as we has preceded, it is based upon creed and belief. And then after that, there are actions and acts of worship. And uh, after that, there are likewise dealings and trans transactions and manners and behavior. All of this is from Al-Islam, and the base of that is Al-Aqidah, with Tawheed, with Iman. Naam, is, the, is the, the belief in the creed. So, the author is telling, telling us it's an obligation to know the religion of Al-Islam with proof. Meaning that the one who does not know with proof, then he will be blind following. The one who does not know with proof, he doesn't believe with proof. He doesn't have any proof whatsoever. He's not aware of any evidence from the Qur'an and the Sunnah and the affairs that he believes in. He just found his family believing in this affair. Or he found the people in his neighborhood or in his masjid or the people in his community. And they told him it's like this, so he said what they said and, and that's it. He has no evidence or proof whatsoever. And is this permissible with regards to creed and belief? That's the question. What is the ruling? With regards to blind following, and completely and entirely blind following in the affairs of creed, in the affairs of creed. That's the first issue. Is it permissible? What is the ruling for this affair? The second issue is based upon that. The, the, the second issue that we will discuss, inshallah, is based upon that. Very important for a believer to be aware of likewise. These are some detailed affairs that the ulama have mentioned with regards to this. Ma'rifatu din al-Islami bil to know the religion of Islam with evidence. So is it permissible to blind follow in the fundamentals and the foundations of the deen? And uh, the second issue, or the mas'ala thaniya, هَلْ يَسِحُ إِمَانُ مَنْ قَلَّدَ فِي أُصُولِ الدِّينِ يعني في الأقائد, Is the iman of an individual who blind follows purely in the affairs of creed and belief, in the fundamentals of the deen, is his iman correct? Is his iman correct? And what is the ruling of the one who does that? And then, or what is the ruling, excuse me, of doing that? And he blind following in the affairs of creed and belief, and the fundamentals of the deen, what is the ruling of that action? And then what is the ruling of the iman if one fell into that action? And what is his reality? So these are the two affairs that... <clears throat> We want to discuss because we have seen in our previous class the statement of Sheikh Abdul Rahman ibn Qasim, and he mentioned in his commentary about the statement of the author Bil Adilla, and in how important it is to know the religion of Al Islam with evidences and proof, uh, because uh, the one who does not know his Deen and his religion, he does not know his Lord with proof and evidence, nor does he know his Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with any evidence or proof, nor does he know the deen of Al Islam with any evidence or proof. This person, it is feared for him that he will go astray in this life. It is feared for him that he will be tried and his feet will slip in this life and he will leave the straight path. Billah. And it is likewise feared for him that in the hereafter, when the angels come to question him, he will not be able to answer. And he will have a, 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 an answer, he will not be able to have the good answer, the answer that is acceptable. Rabbi Allah. Wa Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa dini al-Islam He will not have this good answer Because he did not even know these affairs with evidence or proof He's just following and saying what other people say So what is the ruling for this individual? And also what is the ruling of doing that? That action, this is the great question An important issue to be aware of And he, this is contrary as we have read previously The one who learns and he knows his Lord with proof And he knows his Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with evidence and likewise, he is upon his deen with insight. 
insight and proof and evidence from the Qur'an and from the Sunnah, from the way of the Salaf and Salih, then this person, inshallah, is most likely and rightful for him, if he was sincere, that he'll be given success in this life to be steadfast and to be upright and to be obedient. And likewise in the grave, he will be given success. Allah Azza wa Jal yuthabbit wa ladhina amanu bil qawli thabiti fil hayati dunya wa fil akhirah. And this is that individual who knows his deen and his Lord and his Prophet. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with evidence and with proof and he applied that and he lived by that and he knows that and he believed that and he was firm in that and in his application likewise. This is the one who was firm in this life and the hereafter. So again we go back to the question. Ma hukmu at-taqlidi fil aqaid wa usul al-deen? What is the ruling of blind following in the affairs of creed and belief and the fundamentals of the religion? Alhamdulillah, uh, Shaykhuna, Shaykh Suleiman al ruhaydi Hafidhullah Ta'ala, he has discussed this issue. And actually he has also uh, an explanation of Thalat uh, al-Usul. He has an explanation of this work that we're studying. It's an audio uh, that he has recorded whenever he taught this book in the Al-Masjid al-Nabawi. And uh, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, we will read some of the benefits that he mentioned with regards to this. And I summarize and he from, uh, from this work some of the words and benefits that he has mentioned. So Shaykh Suleiman al-Rahili, uh, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, he mentioned about the first issue. Nam al-Masalatul Ula, wa hiya hal yajuzu lil Muslimi an yakhudha hadhi al-umur, yani hadhi al-umur al-Idham, yani al-Aqaid. Bid is it permissible for a, a, a Muslim to learn and to know the fundamental affairs of belief and creed by way of blind following? Is this permissible? Naam, is this permissible? Shaykh Suleiman, he says, Hafidhahullah fa'aqulu, he said, I say, and I'm mentioning this now, the words of Shaykh Suleiman, Hafidhahullah fa'aqulu, aladhi alayhi jumhuru ulama, wa jumhuru ahli hadithi, he said, Hafidhahullah Ta'ala, what I say about this, this question and this affair, is that the majority of the scholars, the, the vast majority of the scholars and the vast majority of the people of that hadith find that it is not permissible, it is not allowed for a Muslim to learn the major affairs of creed and belief, the fundamentals of the deed, the major affairs, by way of blind following. And in the, affair, the affairs of Iman. It's not permissible. He says, Hafidhahullah, Bal ta'allumuha bil adiliti fardu aynin. He said, rather to learn them with evidence and with proof is an obligation upon every individual. Is an obligation upon every individual. So this goes back to now understanding the statement of Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab at the beginning in Al-Masa'il al-Arba'ah. يَعْلَمْ رَحِيمَكَ اللَّهِ أَنَّهُ يَجِبُ عَلَيْنَا يعني جميعاً نحن تعلم هذه المسائل الأربع نعم that we have to learn these affairs and the first one is here معرفة وهو الأولى وهو العلم معرفة الله ومعرفة نبيه ومعرفة دين الإسلام كل ذلك بالأدلة نعم this is an application he says بل تعلمها بالأدلة فرض عين rather to learn the affairs than the major affairs of the deen from the foundations and, uh, uh, and the affairs of Iman and at Tawheed and the oneness of Allah and His names and His attributes, the oneness of Allah Azza wa Jalla and His Lordship and His Rububiyyah, the oneness of Allah Azza wa Jalla and His right to be worshipped alone, Subhanahu wa Taala and His actions, Subhanahu wa Taala and the likes, these affairs like this to believe in Allah, it has to be based upon proof. There has to be some type of evidence for the individual to to rely upon. He can't simply blind follow and say what others say. Nam, this is an obligation. He says. Rather, it's an obligation upon every individual. He says, فَيَجِبُ عَلَى كُلِّ مُسْلِمٍ أَنْ يَطْلُبَ عِلْمَهَا بِالْأَدِلَّةِ It's an obligation for every Muslim to seek the knowledge of the foundations and the fundamentals of the deen with evidence and proof. It's an obligation for every Muslim to seek the, fund the knowledge of these foundations and fundamentals with evidence and with proof. And likewise, this is also understood from the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Hadith of Anas رضي الله عنه that he mentioned the, the Prophet he says صلى الله عليه وسلم طلب العلم فريضة على كل مسلم that seeking knowledge is an obligation upon every Muslim it's been narrated by or collected excuse me by Ibn Majah رحمه الله تعالى and it's an authentic narration on the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم so these are the affairs that is being referred to here to learn the religion of Islam meaning the foundations and the fundamentals and the creed and the belief 
to learn it with proof and evidence. To learn it with proof and evidence. To know the pillars of Al-Islam with proof and evidence. To learn and know the pillars of Al-Iman with proof and evidence. And to know about Al-Ihsan and its pillar with proof and evidence. So then based upon this we see the great favor. And the great uh, effort that this Shaykh, Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala, he has put forth for the Ummah by making it easy for the people and collecting this information in the best manner and uh, putting these evidences together uh, and putting these issues together along with their evidences in uh, the most concise manner yet beneficial. And easy for a person if he memorized, for example, Usul al and he learned them and he went over them, then he would fulfill that obligation. He would, fulfill, he would fulfill that obligation of learning the usul of the deen and of seeking the knowledge that's obligatory upon him with proof and evidence. He would fulfill that obligation by just simply memorizing the small text, alhamdulillah, or going over it, even if he can't memorize it word for word, but he can go over it and he can study it and he can learn it, he can be familiar with it. And he can see the evidence is there inside and the issues that are based upon that and believe in it and be upon clarity and be upon insight, alhamdulillah. So this is the first issue. The issue is what is the ruling for blind following and learn for a Muslim who to, to learn the affairs of the fundamentals of the deen, of creed and belief and iman, faith and tawheed, to learn these great fundamentals by way of blind following only. He said, Sheikh Suleiman, it's not permissible. Rather, the vast majority of the scholars and the vast majority of the people of hadith, they all say it's not permissible and it's an obligation upon every single Muslim to learn the foundations of his deen with 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 uh, with evidence and with proof, with evidence and with proof. So that means the one, the, whoever does not have an insight about this, he has to very he has to raise up and stand up and fulfill this obligation. Stop being negligent and repent from the negligence that preceded before, and now give concern for his religion and to learn it clearly and to be upon insight with regards to his deen, just like he is upon insight with regards to his job or his profession or the likes like this. And he is not a fool about that, and he knows how to do his work with detailed evidence and he knows the issues and the affairs of his trade based upon evidence and calculations so on and so forth and he's not a fool with regards to that then how could he give no concern for his religion that which he was created for and that's what he will he will be asked about in his grave and that's what that which he's prepared he's he, he he's on the way to meet and he's on his way to this affair and all of the servants will be resurrected and asked about this and held accountable and the likes then should he not give right concern for that and to know the affairs of his deen and what he believes in likewise with insight and he is the first one himself that would benefit from that he's the first one himself that would benefit from that and be upon insight and be upon steadfastness in the deen of Allah and be obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with clarity and insight he is the first one that will reap the reward and the benefit in this life and the hereafter from that obedience and that clarity and that knowledge and that action alhamdulillah so then it's not permissible to blind follow in these affairs, in the affairs of creed and belief, in the affairs of creed and belief. Time, the next issue, <clears throat> what if somebody did? And at first it's not permissible. Oh, that's the ruling. Time, if somebody did blind follow in the affairs of creed, if somebody did uh, blind follow entirely in the affairs of creed, what is the issue for this person? This is the second affair. This is the second affair. Shaykh Suleiman, he says, And as for the second issue, Shaykh Suleiman, he said, Hafizahullah ta'ala, that uh, here is the second issue, and it is that what is the ruling for the, uh, if a Muslim had a blind followed or was blind following with regards to the affairs of creed and belief? and the fundamentals of the deen, and he did not learn them. Meaning he did not learn them with the evidence and proof. Now, Shaykh Suleiman, he says, نقول, We say, And he mentions some very beneficial details here. And he says, Hafizahullah, Blind following in this instance here, as the ulama have mentioned, it has two situations. It has two situations. And in the affair now is, we learn the ruling of blind following in creed and in belief. It's not permissible. Now the affair is, if one did that, and he, he did that anyways, whether he knew or did not know it's permissible. Yeah, and he, he fell into that. He fell into blind following. He did not learn the affairs of his deen. Now he did not learn the affairs of his deen. Uh, 
with any proof whatsoever. He's just following what his forefathers said or what they told him in the masjid or what they told him in his neighborhood or his community or his society and the likes like this. And he has no clue uh, whether there is uh, evidence for that or not. They did not inform him in this manner. They did not teach him in this manner. And alhamdulillah for many of the people of Ahl Sunnah and the people of the Salafiyyah, because the foundations of the Salafiyyah and the foundations of the fundamental, as we see in the work of this Imam, uh, the fundamentals of Ahl Sunnah is that they learn their deen with evidences from, from the very beginning, alhamdulillah. But in reality, many generations have been raised upon this blind following. And they have learned their deen from creed and belief all the way to even ibadat. And, and other than that, they have learned everything blind following with no evidence and with no proof. So this is something that, is in the, that has been established and something that has occurred in the ummah. So many of the brothers and sisters listening, may Allah bless you and increase you all in good, maybe think the issue any, uh, is not uh, any, uh, important, but rather it's very important. This is something that has occurred in the ummah. Many people, uh, many Muslims have been tried by this. and They have been raised generation after generation after generation. And even many of them have uh, actually been raised because of this blind following to think that shirk is tawheed. And whenever people mention it, Tawheed, they become upset. And they think that Tawheed is to speak ill of the righteous. And that Shirk is actually Tawheed. And they're honoring and respect of the graves and so on and so forth. But and so this is the issue here. In any case, the one who fell into, to, into, bl into blind following. The one who fell into blind following uh, in the affairs of the fund fundamentals of the deen. And, fr and the creed and belief. So Shaykh Suleiman, he said in this issue here, the, as the ulama have mentioned, blind following in this particular situation, it has two conditions. So now he mentions, Hafizahullah, Al-Halatul Ula, the first condition. He says, Allah yuntija i'tiqadan, walakinna al-insana yuraddidu ma yuradiduhu al-nas, min ghayri i'tiqad, wa hadha la yanfa'uhu kama ja'a fi hadith al-barra' ibn Azib. Kama ja'a fi hadith al-barra' Ibn Azib radiyallahu anhu. He said the first situation for the one who blind followed in the affairs of creed and belief is that he's blind following and his blind following of, his, of the people that he learned from does not produce a belief or creed for him. Yani the person he hears the people saying something to him and he says what they say. And he says what they say but he doesn't believe it in his heart. It doesn't bring a creed and aqid in his heart. It doesn't bond. In his heart, what his, what his tongue is saying. The people are saying, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad rasulullah He's saying the same thing like this, or, or whatever the case, the people are telling him this, and he's saying it like this, but in his heart, it never entered his heart. It never entered his heart. He's saying what they say, he heard them saying it, and he's saying what they say, but as for his heart, then he doesn't, uh, it doesn't bring a belief for him. Maybe he does the actions that they do, he says what they say, so on and so forth, but it doesn't bring a belief into his heart. This is the first case in the affair of the one who is blind following in the affairs of creed and belief. So he said this will not benefit him. And this is what has been mentioned in the hadith of Al-Bara ibn Azib. Anhu, and this is what Shaykh Abdul Rahman ibn Qasim was referring to. That bad and that fell answer. The one who, has, who doesn't know the deen with evidence and proof, then he may be tried in the, in the grave with that foul and bad answer. And that referring to that hadith that he's mentioning here of Al-Bara radiyallahu anhu, that uh, the munafiq will be questioned. And the grave likewise, and he would say, Ha ha, la adri. He would say, oh, I don't know, I don't know. I heard the people saying something, so I said the same as them. And this is the affair of the one who blind followed. Huh? If, if, like the affair here is mentioning, in this affair here, he blind followed in the affairs of creed and, and belief, but he never believed. Or somebody who was a true hypocrite. And he said that he believed with his tongue, but in his heart he never believed. What the, the affair here is that whether he, then, however he had the creed, yani he, he learned. And with regards to the affair of blind following, if he blind followed in the affairs of creed, and he with his tongue, but it never entered into his heart, and it was not established into his heart until it came, became a belief for him, then it will not benefit him. Then it will not benefit him. It will not benefit him. Taib, uh, the second case, and he says, so man, he says, that, as for the second affair, he says, and yuntij i'tiqadan. He said that he will blind, follow. he's speaking about the one who blind follows in the affairs of the usul of the deen, in the affairs of creed and belief. He blind follows, but he's blind following, and, and this produces or brings about a true creed in his heart. He, they say there's nothing worthy of worship except for Allah. He says there's nothing worthy of worship for, except for Allah. They said Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa He said Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. They never gave him proof, but he believed it. He believes it. 
In his heart, he believes it. In his heart, he believes it. Even, for example, they said that Allah is above his throne in a manner of revealing the message. They never told him any proof. For example, and he blind follows entirely. That's right. You're right. Allah, 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 Allah is above his throne. He blind following them, but he believes that sincerely in his heart. The, the, the statement, what they told him, and what he blind follows them, what he's upon in his blind following, it has sunk into his heart and produced a true creed, a true and certain belief. Then this person, he says, If he believes it, a certain belief. Shaykh Suleiman, he clarifies, that this person here, as for, uh, or with regards to the people of, as, of the Sunnah, according to Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, then his creed is correct and he is a Muslim. Then his creed is correct and he is a Muslim. And this is the important point here. Because some people might w- misunderstand the statement of the author and say it's an obligation to learn, uh, to know Allah with proof, and then see some Muslims who are ignorant and they don't know the proofs. And they have no clear, and, the, and, and, and see those Muslims who have been tried with blind following. And somebody could misunderstand the affair and make takfir of them. And to declare them disbelievers because they don't know, they're just blind following. They don't even believe. Maybe he will say that. Or maybe he will misunderstood, misunderstand likewise the statement of the author and what is intended. And claim that the author himself is making takfir on the Muslims and saying, oh, they don't believe. Because they're blind following and they didn't learn bil adilla. But that's not the case. Rather, there's details in this affair. So the one who blind follows, it's not permissible for him to do that. But if he did, any meaning he'll be sinning. He'll be sinning by leaving off that obligation of learning the evidences and proofs and the fundamentals of his deen. He'll be sinning for that. But if he were to blind follow and uh, listen to the statements of the people and blind follow them in that, and that blind following produced a creed and belief in his heart that is certain, then he will be a Muslim. Then he is, his creed will be correct. If it's the correct creed that he's blind following, if he's blind following the people of the Sunnah, if he's blind following the people of the Sunnah, and he's certain upon that, then that will be correct for him, and he will be considered a Muslim. He will be, he will, and he will be a Muslim, alhamdulillah. He says, Shaykh Suleiman, he says, خلاف المعتزلة. This is contrary to the Mu'tazila, in this issue. The Mu'tazila, also they have the issue of takfir. They have many misunderstandings and innovations, and from them is that takfir. نعم. He says, والمعتزلة يقولون لا يصح اعتقاده إلا إذا كان عن طريق الأدلة العقلية. He said that he said that this person, his uh, the the Mu'tazila, they say or they claim that the one who blind follows in these affairs, his creed is not correct. I Meaning he's not a Muslim. I Meaning they make takfir of him. Ayyadhan billah, ayyadhan billah. And he for blind following in these affairs without learning the proofs. And he said they say that his creed will not be per, uh, correct until he learns these affairs. With uh, intellectual evidences, subhanAllah. Even they leave off the, the, the true evidences from the Quran and the Sunnah. Until he, they, his, his creed won't be correct until he learns the intellectual evidences. Naam Shaykh Suleiman, he emphasizes and he says, أَمَّا sunnati wal jama'ati fayakulun." As for the people of Sunnah and wal jama'a, fayakulun. They say, مَنِ اتَّقَدِ اعْتِقَادًا صَحِيحًا جَازِمًا صَحَ اعْتِقَادُهُ وَلَوْ كَانَ ذَلِكَ بِطَلِيقِ التَّقْلِيدِ He said, حَفِظَهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى As for the people of the Sunnah, then what do they say? They say, if the person, he believed the correct and certain belief, and he has the correct creed and belief, and, and it's certain in his heart with no doubt, that his creed is correct. Even if he learned that by way of blind following. Even if he learned that by way of blind following. So we have to make a difference here between the issue of the, what's the ruling for learning uh, or, or uh, for learning the usul of deen and, and the fundamentals of iman and the likes by blind following, and the difference between the one who fell into blind following or the one who is actually blind following himself, and then the affairs and the details there. So we see that in the origin, it's an obligation upon every Muslim to learn the religion bil adilla, as the author he has mentioned in the beginning of this book and as he mentions here. Yani al asl thani. Now that it's obligatory upon every servant to learn it. And now, the thalatul usul that are obligatory upon every servant uh, to learn them. Upon every slave and servant to learn them is, is the first one. And now the second one, he says, ma'rifatu din al islami bil adilla. To learn the, the religion of al Islam. With evidences, and this is an obligation. So then, it must be learned in this manner. It's not permissible to learn it by blind following. 
the one who learns by blind following, at, at least he's sinning. The issue, the second issue, what if he did blind follow in these affairs? Then it's two, two cases that Sheikh Suleiman he mentioned. Hafizahullah. The first case is if he blind followed in the affairs of creed and iman, and that blind following did not produce a creed for him. He just said it on his thumb, but it did not go into his heart, or it went into his heart, but he has doubt about it, and he's not certain. And he's saying what they say, but he doesn't know if what they're saying is correct or not. He's just going along with them. He's going along with them, but in his heart he has doubt. Yadhan billah. Yadhan billah. Then this person that that uh, blind following and that that creed will not benefit him. That creed will not benefit him. The creed and the iman it must be certain, it must be certain faith without doubt, certain faith without doubt. And the aqeen and bihadi al-amur al-iman al-jazim. This is what is required. This is what is required to be a Muslim. There can there can be no doubt about these affairs, the affairs of iman and the affairs uh, of the 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 fundamentals of the deen. Uh, as for the one who blind followed, and uh, that blind following uh, caused his heart to believe a certainty, and he blind followed the creed that, that is correct, and he believed in the correct creed with certainty, then that creed is good for him, and ex- ex- it's acceptable, even if he learned that from blind following. But he would still be sinning as far as the obligation of learning with proof and evidence, as far as the obligation of learning with proof and evidence. So these are some of the important affairs with regards to learning the religion with, with the proof. That we have to learn it with the proof. And we should not be blind following. And uh, going back to the great statement and reminder of Sheikh Abdul Rahman ibn Qasim, that the one who does not learn the evidences with the proof, then maybe he will not have certainty. And he... Because the certainty it comes, barakallah fikum, from having, uh, from studying the issues and learning proof after proof. The more evidences one sees about a particular issue, the more strong and deeply rooted the faith in that issue becomes, and in the heart. And if, for example, if some uh, just in the affairs of the dunya, for example, if some uh, young man told us he could shoot this basketball, for example, and from uh, and he, uh, uh, or he could dunk, and he, he dunked one time. I know the youth they like basketball, so maybe he said with some young man he said he could dunk. He said, "Man, you can't dunk. You're not even tall enough." And he came and he did it one time. He actually did. It, he actually did it one time. You say, "Okay, you, you can dunk one time," yeah, and he dunked. But I don't think you can really dunk, Yanni. I don't think it's not something. Then he did it two times, three times behind the back, three sixty spin, you know, like this over the head, like this behind all these different. No, okay, my this man, he can dunk. Now we have certainty. There's no doubt about it. Fulan, that young man right there, he can dunk. He can dunk because there's too many evidences have come now to deny it. So similarly, like that, Barakallah fikum. I want to make the example so that we can see, Yanni, so that it's clear, like that, when we learn our religion. And we learn our deen, and we learn about tawheed, rububiyah, for example. And we learn this ayat in the book of Allah, in Surah Al-Baqarah. And we learn the same ayat, for example, in Surah Al-Sajdah. And we learn other ayat similarly like that in Surah uh, Naba. And, and all, the, all these ayat also in Surah, in Surah Ibrahim, and many of the ayat in the, books of, in the book of Allah, Azawajal, with regards to the rububiyah, in Surah Maryam. In Surah Maryam, mentioning the affair of the rububiyah and the obligation to worship Allah, Azawajal. And yani all of this, when we learn that, and we learn this, and then we learn this evidence, and that evidence, and that evidence, and all of them are supporting each other. And then they're all calling to look into the creation. Then we look into the evidences in the creation, and they're in line with the evidence in the book. Numerous evidence. This brings certainty by the permission of Allah. بِكَثْرَةِ الْأَدِلَّةِ عَلَى الْمَسَائِلِ هَا يَتَّقَوُّ الْإِيمَانُ فِي الْقَلْبِ هَا وَيَثْبُتْ بِيَثْنِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى هَا the certainty will come by having evidences and proofs, by having many evidences and proofs in one particular issue. Likewise, whenever we look into the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that he's the messenger of Allah, and Allah he said that in his book, Muhammad Rasulullah, Muhammad Rasulullah, wa ma Muhammad illa Rasulun qad khalat bin qablikum. That Muhammad is nothing more than a, than a messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He's the messenger to all mankind. We, we know that, but then whenever we look into 
his affair into his biography into the way that he dealt with the people before Islam the way that he dealt with the people at the time of Islam what he said whatever whatever he seen whenever he re received uh, prophethood and the affairs that occurred with him between him and his people and all of the the affairs that happened in the Miraj and then his companions and then the affairs all the way until his death and we learn all of these different evidences and details about him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then it becomes firm in the heart by the permission of Allah that he's the messenger of Allah that he received revelation that he is the final messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in this manner like this and likewise with the deen of al-islam whenever we look into the evidences and we look into the proofs and we see the mahasin of the deen mahasin of deen the beauty of al-islam we learn the details of, of the deen and the details of the rulings and the wisdom behind them and the fundamental principles based upon them and that doing good takes precedent or, or, or excuse me removing harm takes precedence over doing good all of these are from the fun fundamentals of the deen and that certainty is not removed by doubt all of these are from the fundamentals of the deen taken from evidences in, in, in the sunnah and we see about all of these affairs and how beautiful the deen is and how if there's ever difficulty Difficulty, then ease is, comes in its place, and the life's like this. If you if you can't stand and pray, then sit down. And we see the affairs like this, and the more evidences we have about our religion and the beauty of our religion and the correctness of our deen, then the more certain we come that this is the haq, and the more firm the foot becomes upon the straight path. So to learn the evidences, to learn the religion, to learn the deen of Al Islam, and to know Allah Azawajal with proof, and to know the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with proof and evidence. And to know the deen of al-Islam with evidence and proof, this is the great blessing. This is the great blessing that you should strive for. This is the great blessing that you should hope for. This is the great blessing that you should want for yourself and for your family and for your children. That you should want to be upon this deen with proof and evidence, upon clarity and to know. To be upon insight. And this is the manner to be raised. And this is the way to be upon the path to, to paradise. مَنْ سَلَكَ طَرِيقًا يَلْتَمِسُ فِيهِ عِلْمًا يَلْتَمِسُ فِيهِ عِلْمًا الدليل علم الدليل يعني سلك الله به طريق من طرق الجنة وسهل الله له به طريق إلى الجنة الله أكبر يعني the importance of knowledge in Al-Islam and the importance of knowledge in Al-Islam and to learn this religion with proof and evidence and to be upon clarity and insight in one's deen this is the blessing of Allah Azza wa Jal this is the blessing of Allah Azza wa Jal because the people who have the blessing of Allah Azza wa Jal, they have two characteristics and two main traits. And that is that they have knowledge and they have application of that knowledge. Those who Allah has bestowed His blessings upon. The path of those who you have bestowed your blessings upon. What is the blessing that He bestowed upon them? He bestowed upon them the blessing of knowledge and the ability to apply that in the manner that is correct. This is the blessing. This is the blessing of Allah Azza wa Jal. This is the straight path. Al ilm al arsala wa al haq. It is He, Allah, who sent His Messenger with guidance and the religion of truth. Yani bil ilm al nafi wa amal al salih. Yani bil dalil wa amal bi with evidence and proof and an application of that. The application of that upon insight, not upon desires and whims. Upon insight, upon clarity, not upon desires and whims. So this is the issue I wanted to discuss uh, with my noble brothers and sisters this evening and to clarify and to reiterate and to emphasize the importance of this. What we are doing, learning our religion together in this manner, is a great blessing. We hope that Allah will accept from us. And we hope that Allah will make it beneficial for us. And we ask Allah to open our hearts so that we can understand His religion and that we can comprehend the proofs and evidences that we can see them in His book and in the sunnah of His Prophet and likewise in His creation. And likewise in His creation, and we can comply to that in a manner that is pleasing. And we ask Allah to give us tawfiq, to believe in the correct belief, and to perform the righteous actions, and to say that it was good and pleasing to Him. And we ask Him to give us steadfastness upon this deen, upon the evidences that we have seen, and to increase us in certainty, and to increase, and to increase us in understanding, and to grant us the success to live upon al-Islam and to die as a Muslim. هذا وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم.